The mountain ranges of the Tian Shan and the Pamir are the sources of Central Asia's two big rivers, the Amu Darya and the Su Darya. Enormous glaciers flow slowly through the high valleys. It is from these high mountains that the Aral Sea Basin receives much of its water. Central Asia depends on water from two river basins that extend from the glaciers of the Tian Shan and Pamir to the Aral Sea. One is the Surudaria. It is 3,000 kilometers in length and has a catchment area of almost 300,000 kilometers squared. The other is the Amu Darya. It is 2,700 kilometers long and has a catchment area of more than 300,000 kilometers squared. Together, they form the Aral Sea Basin. The Aral Sea Basin grew considerably after the huge expansion of irrigated areas along the two rivers and the construction of the Karakum Canal in Turkmenistan's desert. This resulted in flow reduction of Amu Darya and Sur Darya, and most obvious is the shrinking and drying up of the Aral Sea. The Aral Sea, once one of the largest lakes in the world, has shrunk to 10% of its original size. The water of the two big rivers, Surudaria and Amudaria, is intensely used. Leaving the high valleys of the Tian Shan, the water of Surudaria's main tributary, the Narin River, feeds the Toktagul Dam and Reservoir in Kyrgyzstan. For Kyrgyzstan, energy generation through hydropower plants is of great importance. So the water of Narin guarantees Kyrgyzstan's supply of energy. In its middle reaches, the Surudaria is dammed by the Kairakum Reservoir in the Fergana Valley. From here, pump stations take millions of litres of water to bring them to the fruitful fields of the valley. For centuries, the wide valley has been used for agriculture. Thanks to its extensive irrigation system, the Fergana Valley plays a crucial role in crop production in Central Asia. The valley is the region's breadbasket. Water is unevenly distributed throughout Central Asia. Mountainous countries with glaciers have enormous flows and reserves of water. In desert and steppe countries, hardly any water is available. The intensity of water use varies. Mountainous countries with few agricultural areas need less water. However, desert and steppe countries with large irrigated areas need a lot of water to grow their crops. So the agriculture of the downstream countries depends on the water of the upstream countries. Their cooperation is essential to development. Also, the water of Amu Darya is used for energy generation and agriculture. In Tajikistan, the Vaksh River, an important tributary of Amu Darya, is dammed by the Nurek Dam. With a height of 300 metres, it is the tallest dam in the world. Like Kyrgyzstan, for the mountainous Tajikistan, using water for electricity generation is also crucial. Nurek is only one component of a large national power plant grid. Another tributary of the Amu Darya, the Pyanch River, forms a natural border between Tajikistan and Afghanistan. Afghanistan will play an increasingly important role for future water management plans, as part of Amu Darya's water originates there. In the north and northeast of Afghanistan, the Kunduz, the Murgab and the Tejen rivers flow into the Amu and eventually into the Karakum Canal. The Pyanch, in particular, contributes huge amounts of water to Central Asia's Great River. Arriving in the plain lands, the Amu Darya is now like a narrow strip of life across the vast desert that spreads for hundreds of kilometres. The Karakum Canal, branching off from the middle reaches of Amu Darya, runs 1,400 kilometres long across the Karakum Desert. It is one of the longest canals in the world. 
It opened up new tracts of land for agriculture and made possible for cities like Turkmenistan's capital Ashgabat to grow. But the Karakum Canal derives a huge amount of water from the Amu Darya. The river loses up to 50% of its water to the canal. Its construction began in 1954. This lifeline through the desert was a part of man's conquest of nature, as proclaimed by Stalin in the Soviet Union. Along the canal, in this once lifeless area, agriculture was now possible. Mass production of cotton was promoted. Still today, it is hard work, but the excellent quality of the cotton makes it a highly profitable and much demanded product. The white gold of Central Asia is traded on markets around the world. Recently, the agricultural structure is being changed towards greater diversification. Dependency on cotton needs to be reduced. The water of Amu Darya and Sir Darya, distributed to the fields by thousands of kilometres of irrigation channels, are now also used for growing rice, maize and other produce. Intensive agricultural use of water in the Aral Sea Basin has consequences. Near the former Aral Sea, the trail of the once powerful Amu Darya gets lost in its vast deltas. Here, Hardly any water is reaching the Aral Sea anymore. Nowadays, big parts of the Aral Sea are dead land, desert and steppe. Plants and animals have disappeared. The livelihood for the people living around the Aral Sea is at stake. The wrong use of water in the Aral Sea Basin has led to one of the greatest man-made environmental disasters. It is a big challenge for national and international partners to implement actions which guarantee a more effective and efficient use of water in the Aral Sea Basin.